Good morning, star students. Professor Phil Snyder here, and we are moving on to session two and tutorial two. We're going to be doing the commercial exercise, so watch on your screen there. We're going into session two and commercial exercise, and these are the assets that we're going to be using in this tutorial, and we're going to learn about doing a 30-second spot. This is not a real commercial, but it contains a lot of elements that you would normally find in a 30-second commercial, including a soundtrack. Down here, it's a pre-produced 30-second soundtrack, and then some video. Uh, these are low-res video clips, um, so they're not the kind of quality that you would normally be using, but in order to keep the file size down, I've uh, compressed these down quite a bit. So uh, each one of these has a, a label on that describing pretty much what's in the video. And so let's go ahead and first thing we'll do is we'll start up Adobe Premiere. So go on down to your dock. You should have it down in your dock uh, from our previous session or you can go to your applications folder and open it up there as I showed you in uh, tutorial one. So now we're opening up and it's loading all of the plugins for the application. As we did before, you'll click on New Project. Okay, and then under the New Project, in this in the Name field, type in Commercial, and then underscore, and then your last name. Okay, that way if you want to send it to me, then I can look at it for you and uh, help you out and give you some critique or some advice, uh, whatever you might need. Okay, so browse to where you want to save it. And we'll save this in the commercial exercise folder. So navigate to there in session two and click choose. All right, once you've got it there, you can double check your path there. And everything else should be the same from our previous one. Uh, just in case it's kind of nice to have it on HDV in case we do some capture from a camera and then click OK or you can also hit enter on that as a shortcut and then you'll have our uh, premier user interface and we're going to go ahead and import those assets and uh, I think I showed you before in the previous one uh, different ways you can do it you can go under file and then down to import right there or the shortcut is command I and then navigate to where they are okay since we saved it in here it uh, normally will save it um, and <clears throat> direct you to that folder that you saved your project in and now you can just drag a selection box around all these but again, like I showed you in the first one, you don't want to uh, import the project itself in there. You'll just get an error message. So once you've dragged a selection box around all these, then hold down the command key and select the top one and then click import or hit enter. And then you can see the progress bar and there down in the lower left in your project uh, tab and project window, you can see all the assets and, and that includes this reference uh, video that I have there. You can just click on that, double click it, and it'll come into the preview monitor. And that is, uh, it has a, it's a complete version of what we're going to be doing. And you can uh, look at that and listen to it. And um, you can see how this should look once you're done. Okay, I'm not going to do that now. I just wanted to make you aware of that and you can watch it on your own time. The, and you can stop this tutorial anytime really and rewind or uh, freeze it uh, to look for details uh, or fast forward if you want. There may be some areas that you're already familiar with and so you don't need to um, review them. Okay, if it's any kind of review for you. All right, so the first thing we'll do is we'll look at the reference, okay? And we can see that uh, he's inside the car. So let's look down in our thumbnails and look to see which one that would be. Well, I see down here in the lower left of mine that it's called the road ahead. 
And as I mouse over it, you can just see the progress here. So we're going to try to get fairly close. I, I'm not going to be nitpicky about it. And, and really, it's up to you uh, how exact you want to make it like the reference. But let's go ahead and look in the reference and see what we have there. It starts at time code zero. And you can see that over here that it's 31 seconds and nine frames long. That's the whole thing, okay? Uh, it went a little bit over 30 seconds, but including the fade in and fade out, or the fade out. I think we have a fade out at the end, yeah. So uh, let's just drag this along and we can see, okay, right before it cuts, you can see there's another car coming in to view. So let's and and you can see it as the camera bobbles a little bit uh, you can see that the the car that's oncoming is kind of popping in there right before it cuts so that uh, let, let's go to the last frame of that you can use your uh, left and right arrow key to get the exact frame the last frame there is at 504 so let's look for something that looks pretty close to that in our road ahead clip. All right. And you can see that the total length of that is 16 seconds and nine frames. So let's scrub through that. We can see there's a car going by. That's not like what's in our video sample. It's more like what we see here. And then it yeah, that looks a lot like what we had. So let's, we can really pick any of this uh, after that car goes by. Let's just go for, just for grins, let's take it to 32 as our end point. And again, you can mark in by clicking this, or you can press the I key on the keyboard. All right. And then we want five seconds and four frames. So we can just move this down uh, about five seconds. So that's at, at 32. Let's go down to 37 and four frames. So let's type in that. You can just select this 37 and four frames and hit in and then press the out key or the O key on the keyboard and you can see that comes to exactly five seconds and four frames which is just what we want. Now you can see where I'm pointing here with the cursor that uh, no sequence has been created yet and what I like to do to create the sequence most often is simply let the clip itself create the sequence that way I know that the sequence that I'm working in is native to the compression of the clip that I'm using. And so the way I do that is I simply click on the clip that's in the preview monitor, in the source monitor, and drag it down into the timeline. And it creates a sequence. And there you go. Let's expand that. Remember from the first tutorial, let's expand it up and we can Press the plus key to zoom in and see that thumbnail a little bit better. And so we have our five second and four frame clip there, the first one, and we have a sequence created. And it automatically names the sequence after the name of the clip. And we can rename the sequence simply by going into the project window here and double clicking on the name here. And let's call this commercial so there's no confusion about it okay and you can see it's the new name is right there commercial all right so let's go ahead and lay down the second clip click on the timeline here and let's press the down arrow to take us to the end of that clip and then we'll be right where we want to be when we lay down the second piece. Okay, first of all, let's go to our reference video, double click on that in the project window, and let's find out where that cuts. Okay, so we've scrubbed down to the last frame, 
And again, you can use your arrow key left and right to find the first frame of the next one. And I just happen to know that all of these uh, first three cuts are about five seconds and four frames. So we can, but we can measure it by getting to the first frame here. And that is the driver turns clip. Press the I key and then let's scrub down to the next cut and we can arrow to get the exact one and so we want the last frame that's this one here and press the out key and we can see that that's five seconds and five frames so that's how long we want the next edit to be so just you can write that down or just remember it in your head now mouse down to your project window and look for driver turns, the one that matches that. And notice that about two seconds into this clip, he turns his head. So we want to get something that's pretty close to that. He turns his head and he looks into the rear view mirror, the exterior rear view mirror. So let's see if we can find something like that. Click, double click on driver turns and let's scrub through that and see if we can find that. That looks just exactly like what we have in the reference. So there's his head turning. Let's go back about two seconds. We're at eight and let's go back two seconds to about six. That'll be our endpoint. Press the I key and then we want to go down five seconds and five frames which would be 11 and 5. 11 and 5. That takes our playhead down and press the out button and you see we have 5 seconds and 5 frames. And let's just go ahead drag video only down and it is almost exactly the same off by one frame compared to the other one. All right, so let's look at our edit so far. We have the first bit, and then cuts to the second one, and then he looks. Okay, so that takes us to the end of that one. And now let's look at our reference again. So we have that the first one and then the second one and then let's see where it cuts to the next one right there okay so arrow to the first frame of that one and you can see that's a multi-frame look we have two smaller clips and then a larger clip over here so let's press the in key and then we happen to know that it's going to cut pretty soon but now they're not all going to cut at the same time so we have to look for the which one is going to be the first one to cut. And that just happens to be the one on the right where it cuts to the close up of his closed eyes. So let's arrow to that to the end of that clip where the uh, it's the closer closer shot of the explosion. Press the out key and you can see yes again that's 5 seconds and 5 frames. So that's what we want to do on the close-up shot of the car explosion. And that's when this one right here, explosion CU or close-up. But before we bring that into the source monitor, let's take a look and try to match up where that explosion takes place. So we can scrub through. We're at 10, we're at 1010 right here in the commercial and so let's scrub down and see where that explosion the first frame of that explosion it's really close so you can see just arrow through it see that explosion that flash down by the left rear tire that's the first frame of the explosion that's our first indication so that's at 1103 which if we start at 1010 is about just a little less than a, a second after it starts playing. So that's 
23 frames. So let's get our reference in, go in 23 frames, get our endpoint at that explosion. Find, out, find that flash. Oh, there it is. Find that flash, okay. And then we need to go back 23 frames from there. You press your M key for to make a marker. And let's go back 23. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. And that'll be our endpoint. Press the I key. Now there are other ways to do it. You could just do it mathematically and type it in, but it depends on how you do it the fastest or the easiest way. Just try to keep it easy for you. Now remember that was five seconds and five frames. So we want to start here and go down five seconds and five frames from 122. So that would be six and 27. So let's type in six and 27. Okay, and that moves our playhead down here. And let's press the out key and then we see we have five seconds and five frames right there and let's go ahead and this time let's use this key here this is the overwrite key remember from our first tutorial but there's also a shortcut you can see there it's the dot or the period just press the period and as long as you're at the next frame after your edit your last edit then it'll lay it in right where you want it so now we have three cuts about the same length and they just happen to also be cutting on a musical cue uh, that's timed as well and we'll hear that music here in a little bit all right so next what I'd like to do is go ahead and lay down all of these edits on the close-up of the car first and then we'll uh, go ahead and squeeze them down and then add the other ones. All right. So press the, if you're down in the timeline here, press the down arrow key and that'll take you to the, uh, after the last frame of your edit. Okay. Now let's go over into the project window. Double click again on the commercial reference. Okay, so we've got that. Now, uh, a quick way to make sure you're at the end here is to press the down arrow key and then the right arrow key and that takes you to the next frame. That's the first frame of the next cut here with his eyes closed. Or his, well, it's called eyes open as we'll see. Press the I key because we're going to measure the length of this next edit. If we're right at about 15, 15, 15 there as our endpoint, and we scrub down, let's see where his eyes open. His eyes open right about 2020, 2015, 2020, right around there. So again, we're not going to try to be too exact on that. So from 15, 15 to let's say 20. 20 and a half or so. So it's about five and a half seconds. So let's go into the eyes open and look to see where his eyes open. Right about there. Okay. This one we can start right at the beginning. Let's let this one be the beginning. So that'll be our endpoint. It automatically extrapolates the endpoint. And the total length, remember, was seven seconds and 14 frames so let's go down seven seconds and 14 frames which would be 34 and 19. that'll be our out point and let's like we did before do the shortcut, press the period key, and it lays it down in there. All right, and that's 714. All right. Now let's look at our reference again. Click on the reference, and 
let's press the down arrow key till we get to the end of that last clip and then right arrow key to the first frame of the next cut that's this one here and that happens to be called face forward okay first let's check and see how long it is press the I key for the first frame and then let's scrub it down to see where that cuts okay it's pretty short it cuts to a really close-up of his eyes and let's get the last frame of that okay that's that one there press the out key we can see that that's at 25 22 and it's two seconds and 18 frames so that's all pretty much the same there he blinks once but let's not worry about that let's grab two seconds and 18 frames of that clip so that's this one right here called face forward double click on it two seconds and 18 frames Let's just grab it somewhere in the middle there. Press the I. Go down. I'm at 14 exactly. Go. We'll want this 2 seconds and 18 frames. So that would be 14, 16, and 18. 16 seconds and 18 frames. Press Enter. And our playhead is here. Press the out key and two seconds and 18 frames. And once we've got that, press the period and it lays it down in here. All right, so let's double click on our commercial reference again. And down arrow till you get to this to the point where it's the last frame of the last cut and arrow right one. OK, that's cutting to the close-up of his eyes. It's called eyes forward. And press the in key, the I key. That'll be the in point and then out point. And again, well, the reason we're doing this is we want to find how long each of these clips is. And then it just fades out. So that's the last clip. And so it runs out, let's press the out key, it runs out, it's five seconds and 10 frames in length. So we want five seconds and 10 frames of this clip right here, eyes forward, extreme close up, ECU, that's what ECU stands for, extreme close up. All right, so that's what we want, five seconds and 10 frames, the total length of this, as you can see, is is 12 seconds and 8 frames. So we can just grab something from the really from the beginning. Let's take it from the beginning here and then run down 5 seconds and 10 frames, which would be 25 and 25, 26. And that'll be our out point. Once you've got that, 5 seconds and 10 frames, verify it, press the dot key, and lays it down. All right. Now we're going to squeeze those clips uh, that are uh, part of the multi-screen down into the correct size. Now in order to get the size close, we're going to use the reference and put it underneath these clips. So first of all, let's drag a, a selection box around these clips in the timeline. Uh, another way of doing that to select them is to go over here to the toolbox and select this tool here which is track select forward. We click on that and it'll select everything to the right of it downstream. So now that we've got that selected let's click and drag it up one so that it is in V2, in the second track. And let's expand that so we can see the thumbnails. And press the V key so we're back to the selection tool. Now that we have, we have cleared 
this video one track, we can put the reference video in there. That's why we moved these other clips up higher. So let's double click on the reference and we see it's still got the in and out points here. So we want to remove those and I'm going to show you how to do that. Just mouse over that area there and right click on it and go down and select clear in and out and that takes out the in and out points and now we have everything available. So we just want the video on this. We're, we're going to use the audio separate and so click drag video only and drag, drag it down into video one, the first video track. Okay and as we as we scrub down what we're seeing is the uh, edits that we made already. So in order to see the reference we need to squeeze down these clips that we put in there and that's starting with the explosions and we're going to squeeze it down so it matches the position and the scale of the reference. All right now make sure you have it selected explosion close up dot mpeg4 and then in fact you can double click it and bring it into the source monitor and it'll also be what we're going to be adjusting in the effect controls. So click the effect controls tab, open up the motion, and we're going to just click on there like we did in the previous tutorial. Click on that hot link and drag it to the left and that'll shrink it down. We can see that our reference is smaller actually than um, the size that we're working in. So let's scale that up. If we type in, it's about one third larger, type in 133 and that'll bring it to full frame. And now let's click on explosion close up again and that'll bring it into our scale and let's scale that down to make sure that we're in the right place in our timeline. And let's scale that to the right size, approximate size, so it matches up. So you kind of eyeball it there and let's move the position and we can click on the position this way on that hot link and move it over to where it matches up pretty much and then vertically in the y direction we want to go up and that's pretty close right there and I'm going to undo a little bit and show you there's another way to do that you can once it's selected here in the timeline all you have to do is double click on it and you've got control points here where you can scale it up and down and it scales the same in all directions no matter which one of these control points that you manipulate and you can also besides scaling it you can also move it click anywhere on it and you can move it to the position that you want so that's a kind of a quick and dirty way to do it you can also eyeball it that way and put it into position and then click off of it. So that's pretty close. And let's select it again. And so we have the data in here. So that's the, those are the positions, the X position, the Y position, and the scale, about 64.9. And we're gonna be able to copy and paste that information onto these other clips that we've already put in there that are in the same position. So let's do that right now. Right click on Explosion Close Up, go to Copy, and then select those other three clips and right click on it. And we're going to paste the attributes and click on that and make sure that motion is checked. And that's the only thing that's checked. And what that does is by motion, that's the data that we entered in there when we manipulated the size and position and then just click OK or hit enter. What that does as we scrub down, we'll see that these other clips have already moved in that position. So rather than take each one of these and position it and scale it, we are able to copy and paste the information that we got from our first one and then paste it into these other clips. As you can see, the evidence of that is that it's covering up on the reference the 
uh, text that I have on there. All right, so let's go ahead and back up and we're going to add the other video clips that go into the upper left and lower left positions. Let's go to the first frame of the next video with his eyes open. And I wanna move over here and let's move down the whole timeline window so that we'll have room up here for the other tracks to be viewed. So let's get the position for the first frame of the multi-frame. So we're one frame off, but that's neither here. Nor there. Actually, we could fix that really easily just by going in and, and trimming this to the right one and then this to the right one. And we have a nice exact cut. Okay. So let's work on this now. We're at the first frame of the multi-frame and let's do the upper left first. Let's look for that in uh, the, it's called explosion in mirror. So let's get that and let's look at the reference. Now that we have the reference in the timeline, let's look at that and figure out where we want to put that in. Let's scrub it down, first frame, scrubbing down. And so you see, you don't see the car until about maybe a third of the way through it. Car comes in and it's already flaming and it passes through. So that's the way we want to do this. We, we come into it before we get in, we come into it before we see the car and then the car passes and then we're past it and all we see is smoke in the mirror. Yeah, that's what all this is, smoke and mirrors. Okay, so let's find that in here. And, and also, let's figure out how long that is. So here's in the timeline. That's the first frame. Let's hit I for the endpoint. Let's see how long a clip we need for this and then go to the out point of that clip right there. So let's get the first frame, which is, has those lines in the road, and we'll go to the last frame of the explosion and press out, okay? So that shows here over on the right, it is 717. So seven seconds and 17 frames is the length of that clip. So again, remember 717, you can write that down if you want, if that helps. So let's find that spot in here. It looks like it starts right about at the beginning. So let's, that'll be our end point. Okay, so a pretty easy way to do this is just go down seven seconds and 17 frames. Let's just kind of eyeball it here and remember we can see the smoking car there in the rear view mirror right about where we want to get out. So remember let's look for 717. Press the out key and we see we're at 807 so let's move that back a little till we get to 717. There we go. Press the out key and we have 717. Now Let's go ahead and we're going to drag that into video three, V3, and put it, put it right in there. And since we have our edit there, let's target that track and click on overwrite. And that lays it right in there. So let's expand that so we can see the thumbnail. And there we are, and we're right at the next, right here, we're right at the next point for our next edit. First of all, before we do that, let's scale that down to match the reference video behind it. Okay, so click on that, and we'll do our little double click thing. Since we have it selected, double click on it in this program monitor 
So you got the control points and then we're going to click and drag it down in size. Just one little bit of caution there when you do it this way. Make sure that when you double click on it and you're moving it around that you've got it selected here and that's indicated by it being light like that. So because sometimes you might accidentally select this one by mistake which would be this one here. So make sure that that one's selected. And let's move it into position. Let's uh, first of all let's get the size to match. Kind of eyeballing it. And we can let it you can see that it's kind of overlapping the edge there so we can get it pretty close. It's overlapping on the left side and overlapping on the top a little bit. So let's get it pretty close here. Let's scale it up, kind of eyeball it. Oops, the other way. And again, we're not going for exact, but just get it kind of close, eyeballing it, and then move it into position. So it gets pretty close. And that's pretty darn close. Okay. So when we do the other ones, then we can do the same thing. Now let's go ahead and do the lower left one too, and then we'll fill in the rest of them at the end. So let's look for this one here. That is the big explosion of the car. And that's this one here, the wide shot. So let's take a look at that and scrub through it. You can see the big explosion. Okay. Now these all don't totally match up. There's a little bit of difference in the continuity and stuff. So let's look at the reference over here and see when that explosion comes in and how long it is. So starting here, looking at the lower left, that's our endpoint. Let's press the I key and then scrub down to the explosion. The explosion happens, okay, we're at 1010. The explosion starts happening right there at 1206. So two seconds and actually 1207, two seconds, seven frames in. So 207, and then it goes to here, where we cut to the profile of the woman. So that's our out point. So remember 207, then that's our out point. So that edit is 10 seconds and seven frames long. It's a little bit longer than the explosion in the mirror one. Okay, so. 10 seconds and 7 frames. Let's just get that from the beginning again, like we did the other one. Let's go down 10 seconds and 7 frames. So at 57, we're going to go down from 58, 57, 05 to 59, 07. And 12. 5907. Press the out key and let's get it exact. Out key, and there we go. 10 seconds and 7 frames. And now we're going to drop that in here, but this time we're going to drop it into track 4. But we don't have a track 4, so we're going to have to create one. There are a couple ways of doing that. First of all, we can go into sequence and then go down to add tracks and add, we can add one video track. So we click on that and there we go. We've got video four just showed up. Another way of doing that is we can simply drag it down into the track and it'll make one by itself.
So let's drag that down and there it is, it created one. Let's expand it up so we can see it and there it is. Now let's do the same thing we did before to shrink it down and put it in the position. Make sure it's selected, explosion wide shot, then double click on it and let's scale it down and position it. So scale it down so it looks like it's about the same as the other one. Now this one's going to overlap quite a bit. And actually it's cropped too, so I'm going to show you how to crop it as well. So let's take it right about there and let's crop it. Go over into your effects tab over here, click on effects, and we want to crop it. So we could we could open these up and look for crop, but the quickest way is to just, since we know we need to crop it, let's type in crop and that'll show us the crop effect. Now there are a couple ways you can do this. You can either double click it, make sure that this is still selected in the timeline, and then if you double click it, that puts the crop effect right on there. Or you can click on it and drag it onto the clip and it'll add that effect to that clip. So make sure the clip is selected in the timeline now. Go to Effect Controls tab and there it is. There's your crop effect right there. So we're going to crop it to the to the right so that this distance from the car to the edge of the video matches on on here the way it is here. Okay, and, and again, we're just going to eyeball it. Okay, so that's the right side we need to crop to the left. So let's look for right. There's right. Click on that hot link and drag it to the right so that the right side moves over. And to me, that looks pretty close. And it looks like the top needs to be cropped down a little bit too. So let's do that as well. Let's bring this on to about a similar position on the screen and let's crop the top down so that it matches this. Okay, so this is the top. Click on that, drag it to the right a little bit and bring it down so it matches. And then let's just move this over into position and it'll be a match. Get as close as you can and release. You can click off it if you want. Make sure and save on a regular basis. Command S. Or on Windows, it's Control S. All right. So now we got all our positions set and we can put in those other video clips and then copy and paste them. Let's Go down to the timeline, right click on the uh, out point or the in point, and then go down, say, select clear in and out with your left mouse button. Okay, and that clears that off. Now, looks like we're, we're going out a little bit off the edge of the timeline, so press your minus key, and that scales it back a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead and lay in the other clips that we need to lay in, which would be the uh, upper left and the lower left down to the end. All right, so let's do the lower left first since it's the shorter one. Let's go to the end of that explosion. And okay, and as you see, the next video that we need to put in are the road lines that comes right after the mirror in the upper left there, explosion in the mirror, okay? Now don't let this confuse you because on track, remember on the tracks here in V4, it's up above, but it on in the program monitor, it's below. So the top one here is at the bottom and the middle one here is at the top. So, the road lines are the next one, and let's get to the end of our explosion in mirror clip. So, the next frame would be covering up the road lines here. So, let's figure out how long that clip is by, look, by looking at the reference. So. 
click in the timeline, press the N key, and then let's scrub down until it cuts to the one where he drives off on the dirt road. That's the car in the dirt road. And go to the last frame here and press the out. And that's seven seconds and two frames. That's the duration of the in to the out. So that's how much we want of that of the road lines. So go into your project window, double click on road lines, and let's take seven seconds and two frames of that. So let's go to the beginning of that, which it's at 3505. We need seven seconds, so that would be to 42 and seven. And uh oh, we've got a problem. There's not enough there. There's only 606, we need 702. So we're going to have to do a little trick here. And that is we're going to have to stretch this video to longer. And the way we do that is we change the duration and thereby slowing down the speed of the video. So let's go ahead and take this and drop it into that track, which is in the uh, video three track. Click on the drag video only, drag it down there. And we need to, like I said, stretch it out. And the way we do that is we right click on the clip in the timeline and go to speed duration. Click on that. Okay, and you can see there's speed and there's duration. Rather than guessing the speed, let's go ahead and type in the duration that we need, which is 702. Click on that and simply type in 702. Enter. And there it is. Pops right into the exact same length that we need it. Okay. And let's go ahead and lay in the next one, which is drive the car on the dirt road. And that'll take us to the end of that. So get to the last to the next frame after the end of that clip and we're, we know that it's just going to go to the end so we don't really need to time it let's go get it here car on dirt road and we know that it starts right before he goes into the frame there so let's get it right about there scrub it to I'm I'm at about 3213 make that your endpoint and then since we know we can just size it down to fit everything else let's click on the video only and drag it down into the video 3 track and mouse over here till you get these brackets and click and drag it so that it fits right at the end there it's exactly the same as the other one okay Looks like we're a couple frames off. Let's drag this down to match two. All right. So there we go. And let's right click on the out point and clear both in and out. All right. And then click off that. Now we need to copy and paste the position from explosion in mirror to these other two. Select explosion in mirror. Right click on it. Go to copy and then select these last two. Right click on it, paste attributes. Okay, make sure motion is selected and click OK. Now let's go ahead and see they're right in the position that we wanted in the upper left here. You can tell because they're covering up the text. Beautiful. Okay, so let's do the same thing that we did with the um, with those with the lower left. So we need to figure out how long this clip with the lady and her profile lasts. So let's go to the last frame of The explosion wide shot into the first frame of her. Okay, that's our endpoint. Press I, and then let's go to where it cuts to another shot of her. 
and let's get the, to the last frame right there out point okay and we can see that's three seconds and 19 frames so let's just kind of eyeball it and see if we can match fairly close to what is in this video but you'll notice that the video that we have in our assets is looking the other direction double click on it and see we're going to have to flip it and that's an effect that we're going to use it's an important principle of design that you want to lead the eye that's looking at the composition inward you don't want to have them in normal circumstances looking outward so that's why we flip this so we need again we need three seconds and 19 frames let's pull in about three seconds and 19 frames of that out of the seven seconds and one frame and we can just kind of scrub through see what we like I kind of like this little effect on her nose here and the Sun is kind of peeking around most of this so it looks nice I think the whole thing looks good so let's just pick anywhere here from the beginning let's just go down three seconds and 19 frames out key until we get it 319 we're at 312 and actually you can see I can mouse over this and gives us a little that bracket with the arrows and we can drag it until we get to 319 right there okay so that's it now let's drag that into the timeline video only there it is and we need to flip it so let's select it go over to the effects and let's get rid of the crop let's look for flip F L I P and that gives us a choice of horizontal flip and vertical flip obviously we want the horizontal flip so double click on that and you can see it flips it the other direction which is what we want all right so we have now just one more clip that we need to put in there and that's that other one of her and you can see since the text is backwards here crime of the century then that needs to be flipped as well and that'll be the last one before we fade out so let's get to the last frame and just like we did with the other one we're going to just run it to the end and then trim it back to save time so we don't have to really calculate it so go back into your project tab and again if you can't see all of these tabs simply click on this horizontal chevron here and that'll give you what you have to select from and let's look for that video of her it's called girl front pull because what it's doing is pulling out or zooming out from her and we, we can try to match this a little bit it looks like it starts pretty close to where her elbow is all showing and then goes back so let's try to match that pretty close right about looks like right about there and you can see it's overlapping off the edge so you don't see the Sun coming in quite as much so that'll be our end point and let's simply like I said drag it down into the timeline there on video 4 v4 and let's trim it back to match the other ones okay and then select it uh, let's also get rid of this out in and out here right click clear in and out okay now we've got all of our video clips in there now we want to copy and paste the attributes from the explosion wide shot to these other two so select explosion wide shot copy then select these last two and right click paste attributes and let's just leave it with the a crop effect as well click OK and let's see what they look like yeah looking pretty close maybe a pixel or two off but that's okay so again that's looking pretty good but we do want to flip her still 
So make sure it's selected, go into effects, and let's double click on horizontal flip, flip her. And now we need to crop her back, crop this video back so that it matches. And you can see if, as long as you have that selected there, you can see the crop effect is there that we copied. So let's crop it from the left. We're cropping from the left because this is flipped. So the left is now the right. So go up here to the left, click on that hot link and drag it until it pretty much matches there. 13, yeah, 13 ought to do it. Okay, so now they match nicely. Everything's pretty close to being the same. Don't forget to save command s or control s on windows and everything's in position now now that we know we've got everything let's get rid of the multi-frame reference click on that hit delete and it's gone and let's move these all down one track okay so press the a key for all to the right and you get those double arrows click on it and then drag down to the first track Let's press the V key for select and let's move the playhead through and make sure it all looks good. It's important in most cases to have the uh, consistent gap between this that kind of serves as a frame in this. That looks professional and consistent and neat. Neatness counts. <laughs> All right, so the next thing we're going to do, let's add the music. So go into your project window and look for the waveform icon. Double click on that. Now we have two versions of this. We want the first version. So let's scrub it until we hear the first. In fact, we can arrow until we hear the first. And we can also see it. Over here on the right, we see in our levels monitor. That's the first one. It kind of pops in there when you arrow right. So that'll be our endpoint. Press I, and then just scrub it to the end end of the fade out, and we'll take that as our out point. And you can see that's almost 31 seconds. It's 30 seconds and 28 frames. Let's drag audio only down into audio one and let's expand it. Okay, so we want this to end at exactly 29.29, which would make it a 30 second spot. So let's drag this to 29.29. You can watch right here till it gets to 29.29. You can use your arrow. Now we want this to go because these are, this is actually 24 frames a second. It's shot in film. So we want this to end at 2923, which would be just before 30 seconds. So let's trim these back. And you notice when you have all three selected, they trim back together evenly and consistently. We also want the audio to fade out and end right there at 29.23. So let's fade out that video. Go to Effects. You can type in Cross Dissolve or just Cross and that'll bring up a few things that we want. Under video transitions dissolve, we want the cross dissolve. We just like we used it in our last project. So click and drag those onto the end. Now a whole these are will be a whole second fade out. We can also change that if we want to a half second. So let's do that. Let's take it to about halfway through. Click and drag it down to about a half second, 15 frames. Let's see if this one's right. There we go. Okay. 
And we want that, we don't want the audio to cut out too suddenly. It's a little bit sudden. So let's let's fade that audio out. So we can go over here where it says crossfade under audio transitions and click on the constant power one and just drag it down so it fades out nice. And that's really good. Okay. So we won't have a fade and we'll just let it pop in like that. Okay. So command S to save or control S in Windows. And let's Go ahead and watch this from the top. And you can see that some of the cuts are being made right on the musical cues fade out okay so arrow up we can kind of jump through it and actually before we export it let's add a little bit of a title to it now we've got an explosion this car this car isn't exploding I'm gonna turn off the audio so it doesn't interfere this car isn't exploding that he's driving fortunately for him So let's add a little something right up here before he drives off or as he's driving off. And what should we add? Well, you can add whatever you want. I'm just going to show you how to do it. I'm going to add Nissan. It's only explosion is its speed. So let's go to the first frame there of the dirt road. And I'm going to show you how to make a title. Go up to the top menu and click the title drop down. Go to new title and select default still. And you'll get this little new title window. And make sure it's 1280 by 720. That's the size we're working in. 23,976 is the frames per second. That's the for, for drop frame in film square pixels because it's uh, widescreen and our title will just be just type in Nissan I don't know what kind of car this is it looks like it might be a Nissan but uh, it's kind of nondescript and then click OK or hit enter and what that does is that opens up the window for your title notice it defaults to the text cursor let's just kind of roughly drag out to about this size. This is your title safe around here, this inside rectangle. Let's just type in something like Nissan colon only explodes with speed. Let's center that and you can center that by clicking up here center and we can choose by scrolling down we can choose the size we can change all kinds of attributes on this we can move this up so we can see some of the different choices here let's choose something hot like that nissan only explodes with speed but see we they need to make this a little bit smaller so it'll fit in there. So click in there, do Command A or Control A to get it all, and let's make the font size a little bit smaller. Go up to font size here, click on that link, and just drag it to the left a little bit. To let's make it 90. And we want to move that, so let's go up here to the upper left. That's our selection tool and let's just move it over a little bit to make sure it's in the title safe area and release and we can close out of that go up to the red button and click on it now let's go to our window a project window and there it will automatically be dropped in like any other asset and we can click on that 
and drag it into video four, the top track that we created earlier. And we can put this anywhere we want. Let's just drag it down to the end and drop it in there somewhere. Nissan only explodes with speed, but we let's decide where we want it. Let's put it right when it when he cuts to his the close up on his eyes, eyes forward. So let's trim that down so it only pops in right at that last cut. And we need to have that fade out too. So let's go into our effects and let's choose cross dissolve and drag it over there. Let's drag it down to 15 frames so it matches the other ones and let's check the fade out make sure it all fades out together. Good. All right. So save it and let's export this. So do command M or you can go to file export. There you see command M is your shortcut. You're exporting the media. You got this window. Remember from tutorial one, we want H.264. Make sure that that's selected. You can match the source, that's fine. So we want to send it to our folder. Go into the your MSU or whatever folder you're using, session two, commercial exercise, and let's name it commercial underscore your last name. And hit return or click save. And then make sure that everything is the way you want it. And your path is correct. And click export. First it renders the audio and then it renders the video and encodes it into H.264. Since this is only a 30 second spot, it renders it pretty fast. And plus it's very low resolution video. And voila. Now if it's much longer, if it was a five hour render like my tutorial is, then I wouldn't be sitting here waiting for it. But let's go down to the finder and navigate. Make sure that it's there. And there it is. Should yours should only be about 41 megabytes. And you can preview this. Anything you select, you can preview it just by hitting the space bar in Mac. And there it is. So I want to thank you again for joining me in this second video tutorial in our film and video school. See you next time.